Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be talking about another off-meta composition in the bot lane, and that's going to be Draven plus Illawi. So as always, you can find timestamps in the description. If you don't have time to watch the whole thing, I'll also provide a link to this Google Doc if you want to read along or if you just want to refresh yourself uh, after you watch the video and you're trying to do this with your friends. That'll always be available for you. Uh, if you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, it's easy, it's free, just takes a couple of clicks, and we have lots of content on the channel. I do tier lists every patch. I stream every night starting around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a coaching playlist full of over 170 coaching sessions you can always access for free. Great, um, great thumbnails so you can see which champion it is. You can try to learn more that way. Um, other topical guides such as best one tricks, how to micro better, how to macro better, all kinds of good stuff on the channel, so be sure to check it out. And this is a new series that I'm trying out, which is where I discuss and analyze different off-meta picks that are kind of circulating around and being popularized by all caps videos and different things going on on Reddit and in the communities. So I'm going to try to give you the real deep insight into these things and not just the clickbait video. And we'll talk about whether it's fact or fiction, whether this is actually going to be a good pick for you to think about in solo queue or whether it's something that's just overhyped. So I did this with Sona Tarek already, so be sure to check that out if you haven't seen that already. It was pretty popular, so I figured I'll try this out with more of them as well. So just let me know in the description if you want to see more of these things or if you have more suggestions for things you'd like to see me analyze. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. All right, so first of all, let's look at Draven and Alawi in general and sort of what's up with this. Um, how does this work? Okay, so Draven, uh, the main thing to understand about him is he's really powerful in lane right now. He's almost always going to be one of the best solo queue champs if you're good on him. It is tricky to play him because you have to learn how to catch the axes as well as harass and CS and watch the minimap. It's just a lot of stuff going on. We are seeing Draven some in pro play, though, because he's so good against early, um, weak early game champs. So he's excellent against things like Vayne, like Ezreal, like Kai'Sa. Because um, he just has so much power, so much bully potential. So he's even getting some pro play, although historically he's been seen as too risky of a pick um, for pro. Turn that up a little bit there. There we go. Um, so I don't look as bald with my forehead. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of Draven's thing is he's a lane bully. Now, a lot of Draven's strength is predicated on whether or not he can cash out these adoration stacks. And this is going to be key to understand when we start talking about this comp here in a second. So whenever he dies, he loses 75% of these stacks. So basically, I think it's every time he catches a spinning axe, every time he kills a minion, every time he kills a champion, um, then he gets a bunch of extra gold. So if he drops the axe, then he loses all of the um, strike axes. So at six stacks, he consumes all of them and gains two adoration stacks. So basically, if he just keeps catching his axes um, and just doesn't ever drop them and does this well, then he gets a lot of stacks. Okay, so that's basically like latent gold that you can't cash in unless you get a kill. And it has to be a kill. It cannot be an assist. It's only a kill. So... This means that a lot of this passive often goes to waste in a lot of games. It's not uncommon to see a Draven with, you know, over 100 stacks end up dying um, to a gank or something else silly, and then they lose a lot of that potential gold. That's 225 gold down the drain. Um, so it's really good if you're ahead, if you're a proficient Dra Draven player, but it's very inconsistent, right? Because they, they might even come down there and just camp you, like the jungler in the mid lane. If you get to, like, 200 stacks, they might specifically seek you out to kill you so that you don't cash those in. Okay, and then that brings us to the spinning axe mechanic itself. So basically, he can activate this. It's relatively cheap, and it refreshes every time you catch it. So as long as you never drop an axe, you can have this up permanently. And it does a ton of extra damage. I added this up before, and the equivalent of getting 35 bonus physical damage, then 65% of your bonus AD early, um, is going to give you roughly 40 to 45 AD, depending on the runes that you take um, early on, which is about a BF sword. So it's like Draven comes into lane as long as he's catching his axes um, and using this mechanic properly. It's like he gets a free BF sword coming into lane. And that's why it makes it so difficult to trade with him is because whenever he hits you, it's like he's, you know, hitting you with 1,300 gold worth of extra items, right? And so it feels very, very unfair to lane against Draven in the laning phase. Now, an important mechanic to understand about this also is that this cannot crit, but it can apply lifesteal. Okay, so the normal auto attack can crit, but this bonus damage does not crit, but it does apply lifesteal. And that's why you see Draven players often taking things like Bloodthirster first, or in the past, sometimes Death Dance. Bloodthirster is much more popular right now. Um, but he'll take that because this does apply lifesteal. So it gives him a ton of lifesteal, even off of minions in the laning phase. It just feels really unfair. He'll just auto attack a minion, you know, like five times when he has BF. 
or uh, Bloodthirster rather, and he'll heal back up to full from like half health. So what this means is that he doesn't need as many of the other sustain mechanics that other AD carries have. So right now, sustain supports are very strong. So like uh, Sona, Nami in particular are really good. Soraka is pretty popular as well. Um, so he can keep up with their sustain, even if he doesn't have an enchanter support, which is going to be important to mention here in a second. Um, but that's what's up with spinning axe in his League of Dreams. And the rest of his stuff are just good buffs that he has, um, good damage that he has. It's important to know. But those are the most important things, is that he's an early game bully. He has the potential to get a lot of extra gold out of his passive. He does a lot of damage with his spinning axes. He also scales extremely hard. People think that Draven doesn't scale, that he's just an early game champ. It's like, no, he scales extremely hard. Look at this. 105% of your bonus AD on every auto attack. That's basically a crit, a free crit every auto that he gets with the spinning axe. Um, to an extent, it doesn't include base damage, so it's not quite as good as crit, but it's pretty damn close. So that means that you want the most AD you can possibly get, so he's typically going to want to get things like Bloodthirster and then Infinity Edge early, which are very expensive items, but very expen very powerful if he does get them, that is to say, which will also come into play here in just a second. So that's Draven, that's what's up um, with him, that's what you need to know relative to this combo. Okay, Alawi's kind of a weird pick. Um, oh, Klepto interacts with Draven, too. We'll talk about that here in a second. I forgot to mention that one. Um, but Olaoi's kind of a weird pick. Usually she's top lane, um, and she's thought of as a big lane bully. But her problem is that she doesn't have any CC, so she can't really assist with ganks that well. And um, she's very vulnerable to ganks herself. She doesn't have any escapes. So generally, she's not played a lot in high-level play, and she's kind of forgotten about in low-level play because there are other champions that also kind of lack mobility, that are lane bullies, that have a lot more kill potential than her earlier. So champions that come to mind would be like Darius or um, like Garen. These types of champs. Garen is actually pretty decent at escaping with um, his run, but um, she just kind of gets lost in the shuffle a lot of times top lane because there are other lane bullies that are either more mobile or have more kill threat than she does early on. But she does have some very unique mechanics that can make her interesting in the bot lane. So the most interesting one is Test of Spirit. So what this does is... You basically throw a, a tentacle out, and if you hit somebody, it pulls back a ghost to you. And then whenever you hit that ghost, it transfers damage from the ghost to the person. Okay? And it can transfer up to 25% of the damage that you do early game, and then it scales based on how many points you put in it, and then um, how much AD you have and all that. But... Uh, that's the main thing, is that damage transfers from the ghost to the other person. So with Klepto, with Alawi, how that works with Kleptomancy is if you auto-attack the ghost, it uses Klepto procs. Okay, so you rip the spirit out, you auto-attack it twice, okay? Then after you auto-attack it twice, you can use Harsh Lesson, this ability, which is on a low cooldown, that will get another Klepto proc, and then you can auto-attack it again and get another Klepto proc. Because I don't believe Klepto has an internal cooldown. It might, like five seconds or something. Um, they've changed this rune around a lot, and it is the center of many controversies. Um, it does not. After using an ability, your next two basic attacks, within 10 seconds, do this. If the stacks are used, you gain extra gold, and you gain extra consumables. Okay, so I don't believe it has an internal cooldown. So as long as you auto-attack first... Consume both, or you use an ability, consume both of the attacks, then if you use another ability, it will um, trigger even more stacks. Okay, but that's kind of the trick with Alawi that's kind of made her a little more viable top lane against melee matchups. So if you're against Poppy or something, maybe it's okay. Um, but that you can get the Klepto. So that gives you a lot of extra gold on that. Um, and then she scales pretty well like in team fights because you can get a bun bunch of tentacles down and they do a bunch of AoE damage in fights. You have pretty good wave clear with your tentacles. So she has a lot there for the bully potential. You can push them under tower with the tentacle smash and then just go for test of spirit grabs um, to try to do extra damage. And also, if, they, um, if you kill the ghost or if they run away, then you start spawning tentacles, which can be very disruptive. So the tentacles swing at you. If they hit you, they do Excuse me, quite a bit of damage. But if they miss... Um, they still are just a real annoyance. They force you to um, try to avoid them, and I think you have to kill two of them before they stop spawning. So it's a very annoying mechanic to deal with. And they can hit other people around you. So if you are the vessel, if you get, um, if they kill the ghost with Test of Spirit, or if you run out of range, then uh, you're going to start spawning these tentacles, and they can hit other people also. So it's not just you, it's other people. So in team fights, this can be extremely disruptive because everyone's trying to dodge these tentacles. They can do AoE damage. Their damage never falls off. 
you know, whenever you smash, it does full damage to everybody that gets hit, which gives her great wave clear, but also gives her tremendous damage in team fights if you get multiple tentacles down. Okay, so that's kind of her thing. So why Draven plus a Lowey bot lane? Well, they actually do have quite a few synergies that may not be apparently obvious. Um, one thing with Draven also that I mentioned, uh, if you activate Blood Rush, then it does trigger uh, Kleptomancy. So I tried, if you use Q, if you activate Spinning Axe, I don't think that does, but Blood Rush does activate Kleptomancy, and it's very cheap early on. It's only 40 mana, and it gets reset whenever you uh, catch your axe. So it's pretty much always up. And it gives you really fast attack speeds. You can attack even faster to get those Klepto procs off even faster. So um, that's really good in general on Draven right now. It's not too far out of your way after they nerfed Conqueror. People are looking for another rune. I've been recommending Kleptomancy for a long time on Draven. And it's great just because his trading pattern is you want to do small trades, right? You want to go up, just auto attack them once or twice and then retreat. Heal up off your lifesteal, then go up, auto attack them once or twice and retreat. Um, until you get them to, like, you know, half health, then you can all in them, right? But it's just so easy to do that with Draven because you have such a powerful first hit because of your axe and how much extra damage it does. So if you just walk up and auto-attack that vein, you're doing a huge amount of damage. And if she just auto-attacks you once, she's not doing very much damage back. So he has the best single-hit auto-attack, maybe in the game, that doesn't require any additional procs, right? Certainly among 80 carries. And so that makes him a really good candidate just to activate Klepto with Blood Rush and then just go up and attack with the Spinning Axe. Boom, a lot of damage. You get extra stuff. Okay, well, um, it works on Ghosts with Draven too, if you, or the Spirits. So if you rip out the Spirit with Alawi's E, then you can both get Klepto procs off of Alawi on the Spirit and you can get Klepto procs off of Draven on the Spirit. So both of them are getting a ton of these extra uh, gold bags, and they get other stuff that's useful as well. They get mana potions, so they can keep using their abilities for harassment. They get health potions, so they get even more sustain. Um, they get the gold, of course, but then they also get wards. And wards are crucial early on if you're playing a champion like Draven that really wants to push because he wants to keep his axes going and he wants to catch as many axes as he can, and a Lally who can also push really well with her Q. So getting these pilfered stealth wards are really, really nice, especially at a moment. Hey, thanks, Joe, for the sub. I appreciate it. Especially early on in the game before supports can have their uh, their ward items, right? So even like really fast support ward items don't usually come online until like maybe nine minutes, nine or ten minutes into the game. So getting access to these wards really early on is humongous for making sure that you don't get ganked, but also for controlling scuttles, um, for controlling dragons, for getting good vision of the enemy jungle so you know they're pathing. Um, it's just so helpful. Um, then that also allows you to take other powerful runes that are really popular right now, too. So you can take the free boots, which are tremendously strong. Now, they are getting nerfed a little bit next patch. We'll see how useful it is. But there are other things in this tree, in the inspiration tree, that are great for both of these champions. Biscuits are phenomenal. Um, even getting the cooldown reduction off of uh, Cosmic Insight can be pretty good. Now, neither one of them is going to get a lot of item actives. But, you know, the cooldown reduction is okay, especially on a Lowey. And getting the cooldown on your summoners is pretty good. Both of them really like to use their summoners. So um, there are other options there. You could even go um, stopwatch is something that gets built sometimes. If you want to get a uh, like a guardian angel at some point in your build, it could be good. Um, but footwear is definitely probably still going to be a pretty good choice overall. So they're great users of Kleptomancy because it doubles down on their aggression early. They can ward for ganks. They get all kinds of extra potions and they get a lot of extra gold. So they take really good back timings um, and they can get an edge that way. So that means Draven can go back and grab his BF sword before the enemy can. Sometimes even two or three waves before the enemy can go back and get their BF sword, depending on how well he's doing with his farming and how many gold sacks he gets. And that's huge. So then you get to go back, you get your BF sword, you show it back to lane and they're sitting there with like you know, 900 gold or 1,000 gold, and they're like, well, crap, I can't get BF Sword, I can't get Bilge Water, I guess I gotta go back and get a Pickaxe. And then you're even more ahead, right? Then you can snowball your advantage even further because you have a bigger item, because you got more gold, you were able to be more aggressive, and you had a better back timing than other people. You're ahead of them in the item's arms race, right? And you leverage it so well as Draven in the early game because you have such high scaling off of just your axes. Right, because they have a tremendous amount here. So you don't need a ton of levels as Draven. You are really strong really early in the game because all you need are your spinning axes, really. Like, extra blood rush is fine. It's whatever. Stand aside doesn't matter if you have extra points in that, really. Whirling death's okay. But really, you know, by level 5 or so, you are hitting like a truck on Draven because 
Um, this scales with the AD that you get, but you also get extra flat bonus damage and you get extra percentage damage. So it just doubles down on the early game bully of Draven. Um, <clears throat> it's also really good for a Lowey as a support. One thing that keeps a lot of these types of bruisery champions out of the bot lane is they don't have enough gold to get their items. Because most of the time, a lot of the like true support items are somewhere between 2100 and 2300 gold. If you're thinking of things like Redemption, Ardent Sensor, Knight's Vow, Athene's Unholy Grail, Locket of the Iron Solari, you know, all of these things are going to be in that 2100 to 2300 gold range. And so if you're playing something that requires a lot of gold, um, like let's say that you were trying to play... I don't know, like a, a Riven uh, support or something like that. Her items are very expensive, right? Depending on what you get, they're all going to be a lot. You know, she's going to want things like Dead Stance or um, Spear of Sojin or, um, you know, Bloodthirst or whatever she's getting, right? Or even something like um, Dustblade or Ghostblade uh, on Pike is really tough to get. Now, Pike does have a mechanic where he gets more gold, and that's why Pike can go damage items because of his ult. But Alawi is a similar concept, kind of to Pike in the sense that she gets to cheat the support gold economy with kleptomancy so well. Because whenever you pull in that spirit, you're getting a lot of extra gold off of that, right? Um, because like I said, you can trigger this, especially if they don't run away or if they can't get away fast enough, you can trigger this three or four times before they're able to break this tether. Because you rip the spirit, and then you can auto attack, you know, once or twice, and then you can use harsh lesson um, again. You can at least get three pretty comfortably. So I think you can rip the spirit, auto attack. That'll use one of your klepto procs. Use harsh lesson. That will reset your klepto procs and then hit them with that and then auto attack it one more time. So you should comfortably be able to get about three procs off of that and maybe four if they don't run away. If you get to use all of your klepto procs off of spirit, if you spirit, auto attack twice and then harsh lesson and auto attack again, um, you can get even more. You can even fit tentacle slam in there if you want and get even more. Um, so she uses this tremendously well, and that's going to allow her to build up to Black Cleaver a lot faster. So Black Cleaver is an item that does have a lot of great utility um, on teams, but a lot of fewer champions are taking them because nobody's playing tanks in the current meta. There are very few tanks. So champions that had taken Black Cleaver a lot, if you're thinking of someone like... Um, who would take that? Like maybe Fiora or Camille or those types of champs. They're all going Trinity Force now. Even someone like Garen, who used to go Black Cleaver all the time, his standard build has become Trinity Force. Darius used to take Black Cleaver all the time. His standard has rotated towards Trinity Force. And so there are fewer and fewer champions that are taking Black Cleaver, but it's such a great boon to your team, especially if it has a lot of attack damage. But Or um, if your team has a lot of attack damage champs. But um, it's great for Alawi because, you know, you just want to be able to survive. You really love the CDR, right? That's going to be more tentacles. It's going to be more ults. Um, just everything about that item is great on Alawi. And you can trigger it so well on multiple targets. So this test of spirit actually does apply Black Cleaver to people. So you can stack this up super fast in a fight. If they try to fight you with this, you grab test of spirit. If you use something like your slam, your tentacle... Um, then it's going to activate on uh, both people, right? Because the damage from the uh, the vessel, the spirit that you rip out, transfers over to the person and applies Black Cleaver stacks, right? Or if you're just hitting the vessel, you can stack it up on the person as well if they're trying to run away, and then if you want to run them down later. So that's an interaction that I wasn't even aware of until I did research for this video. Um, but if you look at things like Black Cleaver, it describes it somewhere in here. Um, like that spirits I don't remember where exactly it says it but it says that spirits are not affected by on hit effects um, so like if you have yeah here it is so if you have something like um, you know wits end on hit damage the on hit damage does not also go over to them so it doesn't apply the base damage on wits end and then apply the on hit to them Okay, so like Vayne's Silver Bolt procs, if you do three procs on it, it does not apply that true damage to the person in addition to the damage that you're doing to the ghost, if that makes sense. But the Black Cleaver does. Okay, so that means that it can apply twice on somebody. If you hit the spirit and you hit the person, it'll apply twice. So especially in team fights, and it can apply, you know, these tentacles can hit multiple people and just spread Black Cleaver to everybody. So if you rip someone's spirit out in a team fight, and then you hit them and the spirit, you're going to spawn two tentacles instantly. And then you can, um, you know, use your slam. And if all everybody dogpiles into this team fight and the tentacles are just hitting everybody, um, 
then it's going to be applying black cleaver to everybody so it's a really strong item on alawi it's great it's usually out of range for most uh supports because it's too expensive but because you get all this extra gold off of klepto um then you can actually afford it at a fairly reasonable pace because you're going to get like maybe 500 gold off of klepto so instead of paying 2300 for ardent sensor you're getting extra 500 gold to get to 2800 gold and you just need a pinch more um to get into black cleaver range so that's really handy also um they are they both are great lane bullies and that kind of covers for each other um, in a sense. So because Alawi has Draven backing her up, then she can push and she can be very aggressive. Because a lot of times, depending on the lane, you can actually turn around ganks in just 2v3 with this kind of lane. Um, if you are, you know, microing the fight correctly, because it just does such a tremendous amount of damage early, especially if the Draven has collected on some uh, Adoration stacks and he um, gets all the Klepto Gold, comes back with a BF Sword, you're going to be so far ahead on items as, and gold, both as Alawi and Draven, that you can turn around a lot of fights, especially if Alawi has her ult. That's another thing, I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but one of the marquee things that a lot of people will say about this build is that you can get Adoration stacks from killing the Spirit as Draven. Okay, so I don't remember if I mentioned that earlier or not, but that is a huge, huge deal. Um, because this is supposed to be only whenever you get a kill on a champion. But when you kill their spirit, that counts as a kill. So you get to um, cash in these adoration stacks. So that means that you don't lose as much potential gold. So you're no longer going to feel terrible when you have like 200 stacks and you die. Because you get to cash them in regularly. And, you know, you might say, well, if I'm a good Draven player and I cash them in always anyways, if I never die in any game, you know, I doubt that to an extent. Um, but at the same time... Uh, even if you did do that, even if you do have perfect Draven play at all times, you still get 25 extra gold every time you cash this in. So it's really, really handy. It's very nice. Um, and just smooths out. It makes Draven's passive a lot more reliable so that you cash in that gold more often so it's not as devastating if you do get killed. Um, and also because you cash it in, that means you can snowball with it. So remember, whenever you get... It's not the same thing as getting to cash in 200 gold at, you know, 20 minutes into the game as it is, or 200 stacks for 400 gold, as it is getting to cash in half of that at 10 minutes and then half the other half at 20 minutes. And the reason is when you get that extra gold at 10 minutes, you can snowball harder, right? You get your items immediately and you can pressure more, you know, get more CS, get more kills, deny more resources from the enemy. So, you know, you want to cash that in as soon as you possibly can, not only because you might lose it, but because it allows you to leverage that investment to do even more damage, to get even further ahead. So that's one of the marquee things about um, Draven plus Allow in the bot lane, is that it smooths out Draven's passive, they both abuse Klepto, and they both um, combine the snowball really hard, and because they're both really strong bullies, then they can help protect each other. So they're both relatively unsafe champions, but they can both just go all in really hard, even if a gank comes down there a lot of time, and turn it around. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and to complement this, Alawi also has great wave clear with her Q. So you can push in a tower, and then when you have them under tower, look at sort of the map here. I don't know if I can zoom in on this map or not. Um, this one's a little more zoomed. Um, the handy thing here is when you push them in a tower, I don't know if I have the magnifying glass or whatever, but when you push them in a tower, that's the perfect time to rip out those souls with Alawi. Uh, and the major reason for this is... Um, when you spawn those tentacles there, when they're trying to last it under tower, so when you rip that soul out of somebody, and then you just slam it with, um, you know, Alawi and Draven and kill it, those tentacles are spawning while the person's trying to last hit under tower. And so that means that that's just one extra thing they have to deal with. They have to try to dodge tentacles and last hit, and that's going to make them miss CS or take damage most of the time, usually. It's very, very hard to dodge around. To dodge all of Draven's and Alawi's garbage, they're going to be throwing at you. And to dodge the extra tentacles that are showing up there. And half the time, the tentacles are going to get killed by the tower anyway, so it denies a little bit of that extra gold that people get for killing tentacles. I think they get like 5 gold, maybe 10 gold for killing a tentacle. Um, so, it's just really, really good. And it's open field. Like, it's just easier to hit the E in the first place when there aren't minions in the way. When you just get a clean shot at people. And, um, once again, when they're trying to last hit... You know, it makes it a lot harder for them to dodge skill shots. So being able to push in faster with the Allow EQ um, is really, really handy. And yeah, like I said, it's almost impossible to 2v2 early on with both of these people. Um, 
specifically melee supports. So if they have like a Leona or a Thresh or a Nautilus or something like that, it's really hard to go in because you're almost always going to have lane advantage because you're going to be pushing in. So you're going to have more minions on your side. And they both just do a tremendous amount of damage to melee. So uh, it's just very, very difficult to go all in on them. Um, but yeah, I mean, he can even do all right into things like Nami and Sona and Soraka, though, to an extent. Because like I said, Draven's going to be getting a lot of healing. So, you know, you can poke him, but he's going to heal through it most of the time. Especially when he's got Klepto and he's got Biscuits rolling in. The same is true of Alawi. Um, you can take Taste of Blood and you can take um, Ravenous Hunter and heal off your tentacles as well. In addition um, to getting all of your Klepto procs and taking... Um, taking Targons and all of that stuff in the early game. So it's particularly good against melee, but it's even serviceable at, against something like a Nami or a Sona. Um, just because you have so much sustain in lane, it's very difficult to poke you out. And then because Draven's getting all this extra gold, he can afford these expensive items. You know, traditionally BT is very expensive. I think it's even more expensive than Infinity Edge right now. Um, I think it's 3,500 instead of 3,400. So Draven's good with those items, but it takes him a while to get them. Then especially if you're going to go Infinity Edge after BT, which is the best build on Draven right now, that's very expensive. You know, when you're getting IE and the next person is trying to get something like a Zeal item, right? They're trying to get Rapid Fire Cannon. Rapid Fire Cannon is much cheaper than Infinity Edge, right? Um, it's going to be, what, like 400 plus, it's like 700 gold cheaper. And so that means they're going to complete their second item before you, and they're going to have this small window where they could potentially be more powerful than you if you were just playing like a traditional Draven build. But because you're getting all this extra gold from Klepto, because you're cashing in these adoration stacks, you can actually afford that at about the same time someone else is affording a zeal item, and you're going to have a lot more raw power off of that than they are. So um, just very, very good synergy for that reason. It's double lane bully, super powers that Draven up. Strong, but then also allows Olawi to rush a really good team fight oriented item, and she does a lot of damage in team fights to begin with, and so she's a really good lane bully that transitions into a team fighter later. Um, and so, because you're going to be so strong in the early game as well, that means that you can potentially contest a lot more objectives, and you're going to have priority all the time, like instantly with Olawi, you can push them in. Um, so, that means you can go fight for these scuttles early on, you can go take dragons anytime you want. Right? You can tell your jungler whenever a dragon's up, say, hey, we've got priority bottom, we're murdering them, let's go get these dragons. You can get every dragon. If their team wants to come fight you for that, not only is their bot lane going to be weaker and push in the tower, losing CS, losing experience, um, but you're also going to have tremendous team fight presence with the Alawi ult. So it just really creates a lot of pressure um, that you can leverage to great advantage. You can also get up here and get uh, wards. You know, on their blue buff, you can even go up and fight for the blue buff if you want, potentially. That's a little more risky. You'll want to make sure your jungle or your mid laner are on board with that. Um, but you can do that. That is on the table, especially if you force them into a bad back. So if you know they're backing, uh, you know they have to back. They're at like 5% HP. You push this last wave in a tower. You can rotate up here and get this blue buff, potentially. Um, so there's a lot of stuff on the map that you can do. And, of course, if you do take the tower early, you can snowball this and go grab Rift Herald and use it top lane and all kinds of good stuff like that. So there's a lot of pressure, a lot of really good things you can do with this. So why play this now instead of earlier? Well, number one, it's really obscure. So a lot of people probably just never thought to bring Draven and Alawi bot lane because Alawi's not very good. I mean, she's okay, but she's not as great with other champions bot lane because they can't cash in their adoration stacks, but also a lot of other AD carries just don't really use, um, they don't really use Klepto that well. And Draven kills the soul really quickly uh, because he does so much burst damage or kills the spirit really quickly. So it just combines so well with Draven, with his burst, with his adoration stacks, with his ability to comfortably take Klepto. It's just really kind of a match made in heaven. And so, and Draven, remember, almost always used to go Conquer before he went for, um, and he never went Klepto before with Old Conquer. So this is relatively new. Klepto Draven has only been optimal for like the last three patches or so. So this is not a thing that would have worked last year. Right. I know somebody's going to come out and say, I've been on the Alawi support train for three years. And it's like, no, it has not been good for three years. It's only been good fairly recently because of the Draven and because of all the different meta shifts that have happened to make Draven dominant in the bot lane with uh, Kleptomancy. 
okay so it's obscure and it has had some help recently another thing is that bt infinity edge is really optimal on draven again back when he was going something like storm razor first it wasn't going to be as good because you didn't have the lifesteal to be as much of a bully in the early game as you can be right now also uh when you rent storm razor i'm pretty sure he had to go something like um I don't remember what he went with the Storm Razor build. I feel like he would get Rapid Fire Cannon or um, probably Rapid Fire. Uh, I don't remember the old build of, of Times Past, but it certainly was not double um, BF Sword item. And so now you need that gold more than ever and you leverage it better than ever because uh, both of these items are both, are they, um, they're very strong and they're, they're optimal on Draven. Okay, so after the Conqueror nerf, like I said, Klepto is pretty good. Uh, and then Draven is specifically really strong against weak lane champions. So in the past, you've had other strong lane champions that could potentially hang with Draven in lane, most notably Jin, but then also like Lethality, Misfortune, uh, back in the Dark Harvest days, right? So in the preseason with Dark Harvest, before that got nerfed, before Scorch got nerfed, um, there were a bunch of like high damage runes that were really powerful. Um, and people could match his aggression in lane, but not anymore. He is the king of laning phase, definitely, especially versus things like Vayne, Kai'Sa, Twitch, um, even Jinx to an extent. Uh, he's just going to be a lot stronger than all of them, and so that means that he's going to get priority. That means that he can have this bully potential with allowing the laning phase. He's always been a bully, but he's just more so now than ever because a lot of the other lane bullies aren't that great right now. Um, Alawi is also great into melee supports, so things like Leona, Thresh, Nautilus are all becoming very popular right now as a response to Enchanter supports. So people are wanting to play these all-in champs, and they're very good against uh, squishy, immobile champs like Jinx. Specifically, they're very, very good at Jinx because she doesn't have an escape. So some of these champs weren't as effective in the last meta because things like Ezreal and Lucian are so mobile that like it's really hard to hit hooks on them with Thresh or Blitz or Pike. Um, or even to catch him with Leona. But now that Jinx is very popular, Twitch is very pop. Well, Twitch is not as popular, but he's very strong. Um, Vayne's still around. Kaisa's still around. They have some mobility, but um, they're just more situations where you would want to take these all-in champs. Because, you know, like I said, Nami, um, Sona, Lulu, to a lesser extent, Janna, all of these are also very vulnerable to these all-in champs. So there are a couple of really powerful AD carries that are vulnerable to all-in, and most of the really popular supports are also vulnerable to all-in. So people are taking more melee supports, and Alawi is great into melee because you get the double hits more. So if they try to go in and you rip out, like, Leona's spirit when she tries to go on your AD carry, you rip out her spirit... Um, then your Q is going to be hitting both the Spirit and the Leona, and it's going to do a tremendous amount of extra damage. And she just does a lot of damage anyway. She has auto attack resets with her W. The Slam itself does quite a bit of damage. She has pretty high base stats. She can definitely hit you like a truck, and then Draven can turn that around and hit you as well. And Draven does have some defense against these all-in supports because he can use his stand aside if he times it correctly when Leona's trying to go in or when Nautilus is about to hook him. Um, and you can actually knock them out um, of their engage. So a good Draven can actually operate really well against those type of things also, and then Alawi is going to be really strong with it as well. <clears throat> and then less champs are getting Cleaver. I already mentioned that one, so that makes Black Cleaver more valuable because if you have, like, Black Cleaver as Alawi support and then your top laner, like your Darius, has Black Cleaver as well in team fights. I guess you can both stack it up faster, but it's definitely going to lose some of its impact because it's not going to have that unique effect. Okay, um, and then judging, is this actually strong in solo queue, or is this just something for, like, challenger level play? Yes, this is very strong in solo queue, and you do not need a duo partner to make this work. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You don't need, like, complex mechanics. It's pretty easy to understand. You just have to explain to the Draven, if they don't know what's going on when you pick a Lally, just say, take Klepto, you cash in your stacks for last hits on Spirit. So just say that in two sentences on them. They should be able to understand it. They may say, no way, or wow, or something like that, but they'll get it, right? It's pretty easy to understand why you would do this. Because one thing is, a lot of times when you play kind of these off-meta builds, and I talk about this a lot, is you can really demoralize your team if they don't understand why you're doing it and why it can be powerful. Because it can be seen as a troll pick. And this was a problem with the um, Sonoteric build, is it can look like it's troll. You know, it can say, okay, because most people are thinking, we need a traditional AD carry, AD carries are good right now. Why would you play something that's not an AD carry? 
right? And so that can demoralize your team. And then you also need a pretty good amount of understanding and coordination with your team because you have to have team fights um, with that build with the Sonoteric. Uh, and you, it takes time to charge up. Right, you have to coordinate with your AD care. You have to say, okay, the Sona is going to get her frost stacks first. She's not gonna last hit. You know, the Tarek's gonna get all of the last hits with the relic shield for the first like five minutes or so. And then once Sona finishes her frost bang, then she switches over and she gets the last hits. And that sounds easy, but that's really hard for a lot of solo queue players to understand if they're not on board with it. They might say, Why why would I give all the gold to the support? Right? Why am I gonna let this Tarek last hit everything? Um and they just won't get it. But it's and, and you have to have team fights and you have to leverage the extra um, the extra vision. So that's a really powerful reason in Challenger and Pro why this is good is because you get two um, two ward items, right? And you can get six wards on the map effectively um, really early on in the game. And that vision is very powerful. You can leverage that vision. You can make plays. You can track the jungler. It's just really really good for macro. So all that stuff can work. The Sonatera can be good. It can be strong. But at, you need a duo for that most of the time. And a lot of times you need sort of a higher level understanding um, of everyone in the game of macro and why that's going to be good and how to leverage it. Right? You don't need that with this. Okay? It's very simple. You're doing a lot of damage. You're getting a lot of gold. And Draven is murdering people. Like, that's very easy for people to understand. You don't have to have any fancy, like, CS switching. You don't have to let the Alawi get all the CS for the first five minutes. And then Draven gets it later. You're not doing that strategy. So it's, it's very intuitive for anyone that's played any kind of kill lane. It just has a weird mechanic. Which is, the AD carry takes Klepto. You rip out the spirit. And he gets extra gold. Like, you just let him get the last hit. He's naturally going to want the last hit anyways for the, um, just because that's what Draven does. Like, you don't have to do anything extra for that. You're just getting extra gold off of the last hit with Draven. So you're not having to change your play style. You're not having to rewire your brain and have, like, 200 IQ to understand how this works, okay? So that means that it is going to be very viable for solo queue. And if you explain that to people in the lobby, why you're picking a Lowy, they'll get it, right? It doesn't take any higher order thinking. It's like, okay, it's the support that's taking something weird, not the AD carry. The AD carry's not going Sona. And it's going to give a lot of extra gold to Draven. So I get it. It's cool. So yes, I do think this one actually is pretty good in all levels of solo queue. Even down in like iron, you know, bronze and things like that. I think that this is going to be one of the more viable off meta picks that have been around for a while. I'm going to make a video probably about the uh, Tolia Pantheon bot lane. I've been seeing that a lot lately, and people have been asking me about it. So we'll talk about that one in another video. But I think this one is the most viable of those three strats. The Sonoteric, the Alawi Draven, and the Tolia Pantheon. I think this one's the most viable at all levels of play. And then finally, um, how could this possibly get nerfed? Well, the easiest thing is that they will nerf the spirit so that Draven no longer gets adoration off the spirit. I haven't seen any nerfs to this. I didn't see anything on the PBE that said they were going to nerf this. They might. But I think, honestly, honestly, I think it would still be pretty good in solo queue especially um, if you have a good Draven player with you because you're still getting all of the Klepto gold off of it. You're still doing all these other things, right? You're applying all this extra pressure. You're helping them snowball. You're getting extra vision. Um, you're doing everything except for getting that extra gold off of Adoration. And that is a big deal. The Adoration gold is a huge deal off of the Spirit. Um, but I still think it could potentially be viable, even if they nerf that out, depending on the situation. They might additionally nerf the Spirit to um, not proc Klepto. Okay? Uh, so th they might do that. I think that would be a little more harsh, but they could do that all together to where it doesn't interact with Klepto and it doesn't interact with um, the Adoration stacks. But I really don't think they're going to nerf this for a while. Uh, there just are not a lot of people playing it. Alawi still has a really low play rate overall. Um, I don't know if I have... I don't think I have a U.GG open right now. But it's not seeing that much pro representation. Um, we might see it. If we see it at MSI then, you know, we might see some nerfs to it. But it's still... Alawi's still being played mostly in top lane. Very few support games, and they only have, like, a 33% win rate. Uh, very, very few matches with it. And a lot of people probably just don't know what they're doing um, when they get for this build. So, you know, does not have a high win rate in solo queue. I don't think a lot of pros are getting it. 
We look at pro. There's not a single game that this is showing where someone's going support Alawi and pro. There are some videos on YouTube of some Koreans doing it, but it just not does not have widespread adoption or popularity. So I think this is truly something that can go under the hood that can potentially be really strong. So I think the probability of this getting nerfed is much lower than something like Terexona getting nerfed. I think that, especially if that shows up a lot at um, MSI, I think that has a much, much stronger chance of getting nerfed potentially um, in the future. And I think the way that that would get nerfed, by the way, would be um, nerfing Frostfang. So saying either you have to get to the Tier 3 before you can start CSing with Frostfang, or just saying that never happens. That if you always, or if you ever take a uh, Frostfang stack or whatever, if you ever activate it, it will always slow down your CS no matter what at all points in the game. And I think that's probably what they'll have to do um, eventually. And that makes sense. You know, if you're CSing, you should not be able to CS and get gold generation items. That's a no-no. Um, and so I think that's how they'll end up changing Frostfang. But we'll see. If it doesn't have a huge showing at MSI, then they may not nerf that either. But either way, if they nerf that, it's not going to affect the Draven Alawi interaction at all. It will affect the Talia Pantheon because Talia Pantheon is very similar. Talia also uses the Frostfang and then gives Pantheon the CS early on. So that nerf to the... If they nerf Frostfang like that, which I think they might do um then those two those two off meta comps would be a lot weaker maybe even not viable at all we'll see but this right here is insulated from that this is a different type of deal so i think that it is pretty heavily protected from nerfs unless it starts getting a lot more popular so anyways that's going to be it for this video um thank you very much hopefully you enjoyed this let me know what you think if you want to see more off meta picks like this where i break it down i take a lot of the clickbait videos and really analyze it deep and talk about whether or not it's something you should actually be considering for your solo queue games um i think it's pretty fun to make these i like doing the research uh like i said the sonoteric one was pretty popular so let me know if you like this one as well share it with your friends or post it on reddit or whatever if there are other people that you think might enjoy this don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content if there's a very specific guide that you would like if you want an in-depth uh complete guide for draven ad carry or Ilawi or any other champ i do offer complete guides over anything that you want it's just 30 dollars um usually i can have them done in about a week i'm going to try to start doing those a bit faster i know i've had a stack of them for a while but I'm going to try to do those a bit faster, um, and I will put it in the guide playlist. I'll give you a shout-out. You'll be uh, immortalized on the channel. Um, and, yeah, I'm happy to help you out with anything that you'd like to learn. But come check out the stream sometime as well. It starts around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love to have you. It's a wonderful community, super friendly. I try to be as interactive with the chat as I can be, so I'll answer any questions that you have. Um you know, about league or just anything else. I do teach at a major American university. So if you have questions about education as a student or from a teacher perspective or whatever, or just some kind of philosophy or English type of subject, I'm happy to talk about that also while I'm playing. So I really try to keep a good conversation going even while I'm playing, but that's going to be it. Thanks very much. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.